These are the silhouettes of some of the best electric performance cars on sale today. Brilliant cars, all of them, but based on just their shapes, you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that they're electric. And that's because the people who designed them are, perhaps unconsciously, still just a little stuck in the design era of the petrol car. And that begs the question, what would a really fast EV look like if you started from scratch? Well, you might end up with something a little bit like this. This is the bonkers era sedan. And this is the fully charged shot. The Fully Charged Show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's Fully Charged Live Canada. Click the top right of the screen to get your tickets today. Welcome to the Aero Sedan. Yeah, bit mad, this thing. Quite a looker would be fair to say. And what we have here is a very high performance EV and a very Italian answer to the question, what happened if you harness the power of bespoke EV architecture, not just to maximize legroom and cabin space, but to maximize performance? Well, the answer is something a little bit like this, something that resembles more a Hot Wheels car that I had as a kid than anything I've ever seen actually on the road with number plates. And the really staggering thing is, Aero assures us that what we have here is pretty far along. This is a pretty damn good resemblance to the car that we are going to see on the road from Aero in early 2026. This, of course, is the second concept that we've seen from Aero in the last eight or so months, the other being the SUV, that SUV, which we did a very speedy walk around of at Fully Charged Live UK South with its designer, Filippo Perini, former head of design at Lamborghini. They've gotten the big guns in for this project. And this, well, for me, even prettier, even more striking and more dramatic. Let's just take a little look around the design and I'll pull a few details out for you. And just a caveat, there is going to be a little bit of background noise. For context, we're in Milan, we're at Monza today. This car is being unveiled to the world tomorrow and there's a motor show being very frantically built around us. So if you see some quite stressed Italian people running across shop with a ladder, that'd be why. And as we go through the design of this vehicle, I want you to keep in your mind that idea of the blank sheet of paper, the idea that this car was designed not using the stencils of ice cars of yesteryear, but with a clean slate. And, and this is what happens when you do that with a high performance electric vehicle. You end up with, for example, a very stubby, short little bonnet. You don't need a bonnet, there's no engine under there. So bring the cockpit forward as much as possible. Really tiny little frontal area, super low nose. Again, that's immediately increasing the aerodynamic properties of the car. You want the air to sweep over the top of it, not be caught by this big frontal area. So they're sort of isn't one. And we have seen that from bespoke EVs in the last few years, but it's a difficult shape to make beautiful. It's a bit of a blobby silhouette, the bespoke EV, or has been to date. Not so much in this case. We've got that really striking headlight design, the two strikes on each side. We get that front and back. That's going to be an error design staple. Lots of very functional aero going on here. Big intake to let that big battery breathe. More on that later. Some more aero here to feed cool air across these <laughs> enormous wheels. That is, that is the biggest wheel I have ever seen. That be a, ooh, 20, where is it? Four? Tw 24. And Filippo, by the way, assures me that you will be getting those on the production car. That's absolutely bonkers. As far as design elements, all of the fussy bits are gonna be kept to the bottom half of the car with a really clean, swoopy shape across the top half again for aero reasons. The only fussy detail that you're gonna get up here is these. This is the housing for the camera wing mirror. And as you can see, it sort of looks like the dive plane that you would see on the front of a super bike. Super bikes have those to help them not wheelie every time you floor it. I, I would imagine these are here for the same reason. Coming along the side, I mean, just take in the proportions of this thing. It is so low, so wide, and it looks 
about nine meters long. It's not, it's about the same length as a Porsche Taycan. So it's a big car, but it looks even longer and even bigger because of that low roof line, because the wheels are pushed right out into the extremities. Worth noting, you're gonna have a huge amount of cabin space in there. You would think because of how far the windscreen goes forward that the steering wheel is sort of there, but I'm peering in and I can tell you it's here. So you're gonna have a huge amount of interior space to play with. It's gonna be really interesting to see how Aero goes about executing that cabin. How are they gonna balance luxury with performance because both are big priorities of theirs. And just looking at the shape of this vehicle, you find me a crease, find me a crease anywhere on this car. You can't, there are none. Airflow has dictated the shape of this car. You can see that clearly here, where the air flows across these gigantic wheels, is then collected by this big fin and tucked neatly along the side of the car where it flows over the back. Efficiency is gonna be really, really key to ensuring this thing is A, extremely fast in a straight line, and B, does more than five miles of range given its inevitably very high performance figures. Remember, when you double your speed, you quadruple air resistance. So this is really, really important with a high performance electric car like this. A Couple of other very supercar-y things of note. We've got double Falcon doors on the Aero sedan as we did with the SUV. Falcon doors, for people that think Scissor doors are just a little bit boring and pedestrian. Yeah, bonkers. And then just get a load of these wheels. Let's talk about the wheels again. I'm not over them. Gigantic and with carbon fiber inserts. There's quite a lot of carbon fiber uh, across this car, not just where you can see it, but the actual structure of the vehicle is made using an awful lot of the stuff as well in order to keep weight as low as possible. Around the back, it's sort of giving me Taycan on steroids design-wise, potentially gonna have an absolutely enormous boot because there's a lot of space back here behind the rear seats that I can see in there. And just looking at this thing, you can very clearly see how it's going to function aerodynamically. You don't need a wind tunnel and a smoke gun to understand that. You can sort of just see for yourself the way that air is going to flow over the top, tuck into this little rear wing, and then really clean break across the back. Few technical details for you. We don't have a huge amount of them, but there are a couple of really interesting little details to pick through that we do know. Aero have explicitly said that this car is going to set new standards for aerodynamics and rolling resistance. It doesn't really make sense to build a super bespoke electric high performance car if you're not going to make sure it's as slippery as possible with as low of a drag coefficient as possible because otherwise you're just wasting all of that hard work that you've done on the powertrain uh, just by punching a hole in the air not so with the air i'm expecting this thing to cut through the air like a eel covered in butter and actually something that's interesting to me looking through the press materials of this vehicle is error insists despite its bonkers appearance that they're not looking to break any bonkers top speed records with this vehicle. There's a really interesting quote from the chief engineering officer where he goes, look, we don't want the fastest top speed. We don't want to overpower and over battery this vehicle because that just creates unnecessary weight, unnecessary cost. We want to make something that feels great to drive. That being said, they've also mentioned that it's going to have up to 120 kilowatts of battery material around 800 horsepower and a tri-motor setup. Frugal. <laughs> Another standout feature on the Miba battery, if you'll allow me to get a little bit battery geeky for a second there, state-of-the-art, super lightweight battery cooling system. So I've just had this explained to me and now I'm gonna try and regurgitate it to you with conviction. Bear with me, let's see how we get on here. Most really high performance electric vehicle batteries, the cells are actually submerged in a cooling liquid, which adds an awful lot of weight. With Miba's battery, instead the cells are actually coated in this cooling material individually, meaning you don't need all that extra liquid, all that extra, all that extra weight, making things an awful lot lighter while maintaining really good thermal management. How did I do? Did that sound like I knew what I was talking about? It's a really exciting battery, and I love this idea of a bespoke battery built into the vehicle, built as part of the vehicle, and seeing what that does for its performance, for its handling as well, using the battery as an asset instead of having to kind of work around it as this cumbersome obstacle for your otherwise really uh, exciting performance vehicle. Price, don't know, but have a look at it. I would suggest that anything less than six figures and I'll eat my own head. Fairly bonkers vehicle, fairly bonkers company, but we need a bit of this in the electric era. We need some bedroom wall poster stuff. It can't all be little golf buggies that are super efficient and go 20 miles an hour. We need something to get people excited about electric vehicles. And that to me is what this represents. 
Very excited to find out more about this vehicle. Very excited to drive it in early 2026. But for the time being, very curious to know what you guys think of Aero, of this radical new take on a high performance electric vehicle. Do let us know in the comments. Do make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. I don't actually have anything clever to say for this piece. I just want to take a moment for this. Have you ever seen anything like this on a vehicle that is destined to be road legal and sold to human customers. This is video game stuff. This is sci-fi stuff. I've never seen a vehicle with proportions quite like this. Error are not playing by the conventional rules. I just fell over.